السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today's session uh, will focus on uh, the seventh uh, outer action of uh, that draws us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gets us more prepared for the day of for the day when we leave this dunya to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is this new outer action of today? It is remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is doing dhikr. Doing dhikr is uh, very important because uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked about that and he said, مثل الذي يذكر ربه والذي لا يذكره مثل الحي والميت. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the similarity between someone who remembers his Lord, someone who does this zikr, and someone who does not remember him is like that of the living and the dead. So it's like someone who is alive and someone who is dead. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in uh, the Holy Quran to make zikr and to remember him uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said in Surah Al-Baqarah in Ayah 152, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ so remember me. I will remember you. And be grateful to me. Thank me. And do not deny me. Do not deny my blessings. So why do we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why do we always make dhikr? Why do we see gatherings of dhikr? and attend them. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يقعد قوم يذكرون الله عز وجل إلا حفتهم الملائكة وغشيتهم الرحمة ونزلت عليهم السكينة وذكرهم الله في من عنده. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when a group of people assemble for the remembrance of Allah. The group of people sit together to uh, uh, make dhikr, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then what happens? The angels surround them. And Allah's mercy envelops them. غَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَنَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةِ Tranquility descends upon them. وَذَكْرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَهُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a mention of them before those who are near him. Who are those? الملائكة. So وَذَكْرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَهُ Subhanallah. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another hadith, uh, he, he was encouraging his companions to, to attend the gatherings of dhikr. So he said, إِذَا مَرَرْتُمْ بِرِيَاضِ الْجَنَّةِ فَارْتَعُوا قَالُوا وَمَا رِيَاضُ الْجَنَّةِ so, and this is reported by Anas radiallahu anh, that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, 
when you come upon pastures of paradise, feed on them. So try to gain as much as you can from these places. And then one of the uh, companions asked Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what are these places? And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, they are the circles where people sit in circles to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the gatherings of dhikr. So because we want to be of those whom حفتهم الملائكة وغشيتهم الرحمة ونزلت عليهم السكينة وذكرهم الله في من عنده Angels surround us and mercy envelops us and tranquility and sakina descends upon us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mention us before the, before the angels then we, we want to be with these type of people, with this group of people. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told his companions, he was, he was sitting with them and he said, سَبَقَ المفردون. So the Mufarridun have gone ahead. So they are winners. So the companions asked, Ya Rasulullah, mal mufarridun? So who are these mufarridun? Who, who are the, this group of people who is called, which is called al-mufarridun? And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, al-dhakirun Allah kathiran wal-dhakirat. Those, those men and women who frequently remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those are the winners. Those are the ones that are getting the high rewards in the day after. So how can we be, be considered of these mufarridun, uh, of al-zakirun wa al-zakirat, those who frequently, who always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how, how can we be of them? Okay, we have an answer from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, إذا أيقظ الرجل أهله من الليل فصليا فصليا أو صلى ركعتين جميعا كتب في الذاكرين والذاكرات. So when a man awakens his wife during the night and they both perform two rakahs of salah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are recorded among the men and women who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who celebrate remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you might ask, what is the, the best zikr to say? Again, we get the answer from our teacher, from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, أفضل الذكر لا إله إلا الله وأفضل الدعاء الحمد لله. So he gives us the, the, the answer. So the best, the most excellent way to make mention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the best dhikr is to say, لا إله إلا الله. And the, uh, the best, the most excellent supplication, the best supplication is to say, Alhamdulillah. Praise be to God. So this is the best of supplications. Afdalu dua. Well, now we say, uh, we are all leaving this dunya and we are all going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one, one day. All our deeds are going to be presented to him and there will be a scale. 
our deeds will be scaled. So we have to get ready for that day. And going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the beginning of the road. And Sayyidina Ibrahim uh, uh, talked about that. So we want to we want to make sure that we can leave the things in the the things that fascinates us in this dunya. We want to leave these things behind and we want to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam said, وَقَالَ إِنِّي ذَاهِبٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ This is in Surah Al-Safat, Ayah 99. Sayyidina Ibrahim said, Indeed, I will go to my Lord. He will guide me. So when you sit alone remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing dhikr, you might feel something special. Right. You're sitting, you're with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing your dhikr. But after some time of doing this dhikr, you feel that you entered the stage of presence. You feel that you are present with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this stage, remember, if you get into this stage, this stage does not get does not last long. It might be seconds, it might be a few minutes. So you have to keep doing your dhikr, then this state might become longer. And during this state, you might receive the secrets from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the starting point of dhikr is the dhikr of the tongue. While you are sitting, you are saying, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. And you are thinking of so many things. But you're saying, Astaghfirullah. You're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the next stage of dhikr is the dhikr of the heart. You feel that your heart is longing to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make dhikr. So you start by the tongue, you go on, then you move to the state of dhikr by the heart. When some people of dhikr uh, sit with people of dunya, they feel sorry for them, that they are deceived by this vanishing dunya. They feel sorry for them that they did not taste the beauty of dhikr which they themselves have tasted. And when they are asked to describe this state and to describe what they know, to describe what they feel about dhikr to anyone who has not tried it, they would say, you know, this is the same as describing the taste of ice cream to someone who has never tried ice cream. So no matter how hard you try to explain it, to explain the taste, to explain the uh, experience, they will not, they might not have an idea only, but they won't get it. So, looking at Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we feel that all his life he was in a state of dhikr. When he would be teaching, he would be remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he is with his family, he will remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he is in a fight, 
he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He when he is when he needs anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he he perfects supplications to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make dhikr all the time for each and every situation he is in. And we have so many examples in the seerah that talk about the zikr of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes. So uh, we just mentioned that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make dhikr all the time for each and every situation he uh, uh, he is in. When he's with his uh, companions, he's teaching them, he's remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he's with his family, he's remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he's in a fight, yeah, in the battlefield, then he uh, remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He does a lot of supplication. So, I'm going to mention now a few examples about his zikr. Um, so Jabir uh, reported that I heard, I heard Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, إِذَا دَخَلَ الرَّجُلُ بَيْتَهُ فَدَكَّرَ so uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if a person mentions the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon entering his house and when eating, while eating, then shaitan will say, he will address his followers, he will say, you will, not, you will find nowhere to spend the night nor dinner in this house. The person mentioned the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, uh, if, if, the, if uh, a person enters without mentioning the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shaitan will say to his followers, you have found a place to spend the night in. And if he, if the person does not mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of eating, then shaitan will say, you have found a place to spend the night in, and uh, a place to eat. So, you have found a place to spend the night in, as well as food. So, we always have to mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we get into our homes and before we start our food. Another uh zikr is uh when we hear the adhan sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says idha sami'tum an-nida' faqulu mithl ma yaqul al-mu'addhin when you hear the adhan then repeat what the mu'addhin the one who calls the adhan says And he goes on, Man qala heena yasma'u nida, Allahumma rabba hadi dawati tamma, was salati al qaima, ati sayyidana Muhammadan il wasila wal fadila, wabathu al maqam al mahmud al ladi waatta, halat lahu shafati yom al qiyama, ati Muhammadan il wasila wal fadila. Now, halat lahu shafati. So, when uh, who, whoever uh, says upon hearing the event, uh, Oh Allah, Lord of the perfect call, Lord of the da'wah, and the uh, Lord of the established prayer, 
اللهم رب هذه الدعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة آت محمدا الوسيلة والفضيلة grant محمد the وسيلة and the superiority وبعثه مقاما محمودا and raise him up to praise worthy the, the, uh, to praise a worthy position which you have promised him so when you resurrect uh, when you resurrect him give him the maqam al mahmud alladhi wa'adta we all know that sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is going to perform a sajda on the day of of judgment that he will praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the forms of praying that he has never ever said so whoever does this حلت له شفاعة يوم القيامة. Then it becomes incumbent there upon me to intercede for him on the day of resurrection. So that person will be eligible for the uh, intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. So when you hear the adhan, when you hear the uh, calling for, for the prayer, you say, Allahumma rabba hadihi al-da'wati al-tamma wa salati al-qa'ima ati muhammadani al-wasila wa al-fadila wa b'athu maqaman mahmudan al-lazhi wa'attah innaka la tukhlifu al-mi'ad then the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be given to that person. Another uh, place of uh, dhikr is when uh, you enter the masjid and when you go out. كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا دخل المسجد صلى على محمد وقال رب اغفر لي ذنوبي وافتح لي أبواب رحمتك وإذا خرج صلى على محمد وقال رب اغفر لي ذنوبي وافتح لي أبواب فضلك. So when the messenger of Allah سبحانه وتعالى would get into the masjid, he would he would uh, say صلاة سلام أبن محمد and he would say uh, رب اغفر لي ذنوبي يا الله pardon my sins. وافتح لي أبواب رحمتك and open the gates of your mercy to me and when he exits the masjid he, he would say صلاة سلام أبن محمد and then he will say ربي اغفر لي ذنوبي يا الله pardon my sins وافتح لي أبواب فضلك and open the gates of your blessings for me Another dhikr. And Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana iza awa ila firashihi qal bismika allahumma ahya wa amut. So when, the, when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would go to his bed, he would say, Oh Allah, uh, bismi, allahumma bismika ahya wa amut. Uh, ya Allah, with your name, I live and die. وَإِذَا أَصْبَحَ قَالْ And when he wakes up in the morning, he would say, الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي أَحْيَانَا بَعْدَ مَا أَمَاتَنَا وَإِلَيْهِ النُّشُورِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ That he uh, make us live again, that uh, uh, we are living uh, one, more, one more time. We have another chance, a chance to live. After we were dead, because we all know that sleeping is the uh, short is a short death. Wa ilayhi nushur, and we will all be resurrected to him. And when uh, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, was all teaching the Sahaba about all the types of dhikr, one of them was uh, entering the restroom. Before you enter the restroom, you say, 
بسم الله اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الخبز والخبائس يا الله I seek protection in you from evil and uh, from the male evil and female jinn okay so from the evil male and female jinn and when he used to get out of the restroom he would say Alhamdulillahilladhi azhaba anni al-adha wa'afani. So he would thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has removed harm from him and kept him in health. Um, we all know that the best invocation is uh, the dua on the day of Arafah. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خير الدعاء دعاء يوم عرفة وخير ما قلت أنا والنبيون من قبلي لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. So the best invocation is that of the day of Arafat and the best that anyone can say is what I and the the prophets before me have said. So what did uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the prophets before him said? La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. There is no God uh, uh, that, uh, to be worshipped but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamd has Allah has no partner he is the uh, uh he is the one to be praised he is the one who owns everything he's the one to be praised and and he is able to do all things now if we stop for a second and think about dua Think about remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about dhikr. We can change, we can flip our life from habits to worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Min adat ila ibadat. So every day, uh, uh, the mother of the house, the, the lady of the house cooks, then instead of just cooking either silently or thinking about some stuff or listening to music just mention the name of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do zikr while you are cooking do zikr while you are doing your chores do zikr while you go to school do zikr while you go to work do zikr while you are driving go do zikr while when you have any minute free then do zikr Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some people have about 15, 20 minutes in the morning, 15, 20 minutes in the evening. Just they sit alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remember him. Some people like to sit with their families. Some people like to go to zikr gatherings. Some people like to do it by themselves during the night. So either way, let your zikr every day have 100 istighfar. 100 Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa alihi wa sallim. 100 la ilaha illallah. 100 la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah 100 subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah alazim 100 subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illa allah wallahu akbar 15 20 minutes read this zikr sometimes we have another type of zikr which is the zikr of quran so what is the zikr of Qur'an? Some people 
like to read a word of Quran before they go to bed. Ayatul Kursi. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. The three quls. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Qul a'udhu bi rabbi al-falaq. Qul a'udhu bi rabbi al-nas. Al-Fatiha. Some people like to read uh, the first ten ayahs of Surah Al-Kahf. Do you know why? Because Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man hafidha ashra ayatin min awwali surat al-kahf, a'usima min al-dajjal. Wa fi riwayatin ukhra min akhir surat al-kahf. So Abu, uh, Abu Darda radiallahu anhu reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever commits to the memory, whoever memorizes the first 10 ayahs of Surah Al-Kahf, then he will be protected from the trial of Ad-Dajjal, from the Antichrist. And in another narration, this it's the last 10 ayahs of Surah Al-Kahf. So actually, it's very easy just to uh, memorize these 10 ayahs. It's not difficult. And we talked about how to memorize um, uh, last uh, session when we talked about reciting the Quran and we said that the easiest way is to follow a reciter and to listen you can you can do that okay now the Quran will protect you this surah al-kahf this these ayahs the first ten ayahs or the last ten ayahs of Surah Al-Kahf will protect us, will protect us from the the Shal, from the Antichrist. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that, as we just mentioned, uh, uh, whoever memorizes these these ayahs will be protected from the Dajjal. So this is the first word of Quran. The uh, Quran also will protect us from the grave's punishment after death. When? If we keep reciting Surah Al-Kahf. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu said, read Surah Al-Mulk to protect yourselves from the punishment of the grave. Another word that is uh, Quran word, that is uh, Quran zikr, uh, Sayyidina Ibn Mas'ud uh, reported that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man qara'a surat al-waqi'a fi kulli layla lam tusibhu faqatun abada. So Sayyidina Ibn Mas'ud reported that uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever recites Surah Al-Waqi'ah every night will never be afflicted by want or by need. And Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu used to order his daughters to recite Surah Al-Waqi'ah every night. Again, uh, we have from the treasures of uh, uh, the uh, uh, from the treasures of the Arsh, the last two ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah, and these were a gift from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to his ummah during the Isra al Miraj, and. Oh, again, try to read the the last two ayahs as your Quran zikr uh, before you go to bed. Now we can say, okay, so we have so many things to do. We can do a lot of dhikr, but there are some shortcuts, and the rewards for those shortcuts is immense. 
Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us everything. And he said in one of the, of, in, of the narrations, Kalimatani khafifatani ala al-lisan, thaqilatani fi al-mizan, habibatani ila al-rahman, subhanallah wa bihamdih subhanallah al-azim. Two words are light on the tongue. They weigh heavily in the balance and they are loved to the most merciful one. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah al -azim. So glory is to Allah and praise is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the great, the most great. He is the greatest. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah al -azim. One time, Sayyidina Abu Dhar uh, radiallahu anhu was with, with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Ala ukhbiruka bi ahabbi al-kalami ila Allah? Shall I tell you the, the most loved expression by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And Sayyidina Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu said, Yes, ya Rasulullah. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Ahabbu al-kalami ila Allah, subhanallah wa bihamdih. The most loved words to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to say, subhanallah wa bihamdih. The mother of the believers, radiallahu anha, was a Juwayriya, Ummu al Mu'minin, radiallahu anha, was a righteous lady. And she used to do dhikr a lot. And she used to uh, do, uh, she used to pray Fajr and then stay until uh, the uh, uh, rising of the sun, until Shuru, and she would be remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as I mentioned, uh, we are doing the shortcuts now. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one day he, uh, uh, he was uh, uh, with her, and so he went out uh, from her house one morning, and uh, that was at the time when he uh, prayed Fajr prayer. And while uh, she was still praying, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, came back from the prayer. And he returned uh, to her when it was sunrise. And he found her sitting and mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing dhikr and dhikr and dhikr. And he asked her if she was still in the same position as that in which he had left her. And when she replied that she was, so he said, so this is the shortcut. Imagine. He said to her, لقد قلت بعدك أربع كلمات ثلاث مرات لو وزنت بما قلت منذ اليوم لوزنتهن سبحان الله وبحمده عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزنة عرشه ومداد كلماته So he said to her I said uh, three times four phrases if weighed against all you have said today then the scale would be heavier towards what I said subhanallah wa bihamdi glory be to God adad khalqi the number of his creatures warida nafsi and in accordance with his good pleasure, وزينة عرشه, the weight of his throne, 
ومداد كلماته and the extent of his words. He's teaching us shortcuts also, even in dhikr. Subhanallah. So, four times, uh, uh, three times the four words that he said, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, adad khalqihi, wa ridha nafsihi, wa zinat arshihi, wa midad kalimatihi. And another shortcut is what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us. لقيت إبراهيم إبراهيم صلى الله عليه وسلم ليلة أسري بي. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, I met Ibrahim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the night of ascension of Yawm al-Isra. Uh, فقال يا محمد أقرئ أمتك مني السلام. So Ibrahim alayhi salam said, O oh Muhammad, convey my greetings to your ummah. So now we know that he has greeted us. We have to return the, the, the salam and we say, Wa alayka salam, ya Sayyidina Ibrahim. Wa akhbirhum. So tell them, Anna al jannata tayyibatu turba. Tell them that Jannah has a vast plain of pure soul. عَذْبَةُ الْمَاء and sweet, sweet water وَأَنَّهَا قِيْعَان it's a plain leveled land وَأَنَّ غِرَاسَهَا and the plants that grow there what is it? سُبْحَانَ اللَّهُ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهُ وَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ so when you say Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Then you have planted your, your place of Jannah with, with, these, with these amazing phrases. So these are the plants of Jannah. And <clears throat> another narration. Um, uh, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al Azim is the each one, whenever you say it, each time you say it, you are planting a palm tree in Jannah. Even during the time of calamities, we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do dhikr without, without uh, noticing. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How? So when, when there is a problem, when there is a calamity, we say, Alhamdulillah. This is the first word that we say. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah that it wasn't bigger than this. Alhamdulillah that it wasn't, that this affliction is not in my religion. And we know that when we say Alhamdulillah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will highly reward us. But you know what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Asr in Ayah 2, He said, Inna al-insana lafi khusr. Allah is swearing, indeed, mankind is in loss. Why? Allah swears that man is in loss. So with all that said about the rewards of dhikr, about the shortcuts of dhikr, man still forgets to say these short forms of dhikr, which, they, which generate a lot of good deeds and a lot of reward. So he misses to collect abundant reward which might need just very short time to say. So this is why Allah is swearing that man is in loss. Because he is not collecting, he is not easily collecting a lot of rewards, a lot of good deeds. So one of the benefits of dhikr is to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To feel that you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Now, think a little bit more. What is another benefit of fikr? One of the best benefits of thicker is that it keeps shaitan away. It wakens shaitan. And what happens when shaitan is away and when, when he is weak? Then the soul gets stronger. The relationship between the person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets stronger. And when the soul is stronger, then a person starts to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. And what does this remind us? This reminds us of the soul in Ramadan. In Ramadan, sh the shaitans are, are, are chained and the soul gets stronger and stronger. And that's why in Ramadan we do way much more ibadah, way much more dhikr, way much more worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than we do outside of Ramadan. We read more Quran. We pray 20 rak'ahs of tarawih. But on the second day after Ramadan, the following day after Ramadan, we don't do that. So, this is the benefit of getting shaitan away. The soul would get stronger. And this is what we need in this dunya. A lot of things, a lot of arrows are, are uh, uh, being shot against us. These deceiving errors, these de this deceiving dunya, these calamities, everything is, is against man. But with zikr, we get stronger to face everything. Because we are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mentioned that with zikr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give us certain secrets. He will give us certain light that would enlighten our path. So, kun ma'allahi wa la tubali. Be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not be afraid of anything else along the way. Allah will protect you. So, zikr is uh, getting us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, said in Surah Al-A'raf in Ayah 118, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَادْعُوهُ بِهَا And to Allah belongs the best names, so invoke him by them. Allah has 99 names, so, so many people uh, memorize them, so many people ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, with the, his blessed names. And they know that Allah is close. Allah said, I am close to you. Make dua. And the best time to make dua, the best time to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is before Fajr. Allah would come, uh, would descend to the lowest dunya, uh, the sky and he would say, is there someone who is asking for maghfira, for forgiveness, and I will give it to him? Is there someone who is uh, repenting, and I would accept the repentance, his repentance? Is there someone who is asking for anything, and I would grant him? But we have to be awake. Otherwise, we would be of those in al insan and fi khusr, not collecting these rewards that Allah has given us. So dhikr is one of the outer actions that gets us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It gets us more prepared for the day when we will leave this dunya to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the day of judgment, there will be a card written on it, 
لا إله إلا الله whoever says لا إله إلا الله sincerely with a heart that's believing in it then this card will be thrown on his good deeds and it will have the best reward and whoever says لا إله إلا الله وهو موقن بها he would be highly rewarded وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك and until we meet next week إن شاء الله I send your salam and my salam to سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته